When it comes to UFOs, UAPs and strange anomalies in our skies, no one is better at recording it than you. And that's because there's an element of trust and a lack of manipulation when it comes to videos because I trust that you guys, when you send me things in confidence, they're genuine things that you've captured and you are, you want to know answers to. So that's why I love, love it when people send me their raw footage and, you know, strange occurrences that they've captured. Uh, and that's what this video is going to be dedicated to today is your strange UFO evidence. Now, again, like I said, these aren't the kind of clips that people, you know, they've not been posted elsewhere. Sometimes this is the first time that people are seeing them. I'm honoured to be the person to kind of share these to kind of help get people answers as to what they've captured. And, you know, it, it brings me so much joy and excitement to see these clips because I know that they're not going to be heavily edited to because they're not, they're not posted with the intent of going viral. Um, so that's why I absolutely love it. So yeah, like I said, we're going to be digging into all of these um, UFO clips today. Uh, starting with an, someone who's called Wilfred who sent me over an email saying, uh, just, you know, stated underwater anomaly. The email went on to state, Hi, could you please take a look at these vids and pics? C uh, maybe can you give some ideas on to what it could be? Regards, Wilfred. And looking into it, I was sent a, a bunch of photos and images um, from an aircraft. And the context of the um, context of it is this person was sat in the passenger seat flying, obviously as you do, and when they looked down they found this long black streak moving at a lightning fast pace and they tried to capture it uh, on camera. They got a couple of images and a couple of videos uh, and they can't understand what it is. So we're going to take a little look. So starting with this one here, you can see down here is the strange anomaly. This long, very long, dark thing in the ocean. And as you skim through the images, you can see, again, here it is. Moving forward again, we're on to a video, and we're going to take a little look. Just trying to look for it now in this video. There it is, right there. So we can still see it along here. You can definitely see that it's moving, almost not adjacent to the plane, but kind of picking up and slowing down pace, which is strange. Okay. I think this is the next video, which I believe was kind of more of the same when it came to... Yeah, it's a continuation of the previous video, so we're not going to go through it again because you just see the same thing again. Um, but again, you can see it from a bit of a different angle here. You can definitely see that there's something there. Um, and then another photo here which shows another very long... Um, you know, you can see how truly long it is when you look at it from this angle. So, what is it? I mean, looking at the original email here, so we'll, we'll give that a little read. It says, Hi Tyler, I was travelling from the UK to the Canaries early May 2019. I looked out my window, uh, window seat and noticed a long black fast moving streak just under the waves and I discounted a submarine, whales or a school of fish. We approximately flying around 35,000 feet and I took some video and pictures. I'd appreciate if you could give me some 
insight into what it might be if you notice some um, uh, notice on some videos there were was a smudge on the plane and it's not part of the anomaly i look forward to your reply regards wilfred now what could that possibly be to be perfectly honest with you i have not got the actual foggiest i've looked at that looked over the photos and i've looked at the videos and it definitely looks as if it's under the surface of the water it's incredibly long incredibly strange what is it i don't know what do you guys think have you got any explanations for wilfred please let us know down in the comments below i, I couldn't wrap my head around it i just couldn't find a logical explanation Anyway, moving on to the next one. This was from someone called Kim. They went on to say, Hi Ben, take a look at this a strange thing we saw above our home back in September. Some weird shit going on in the skies around Bolton. Just thought I would share smiley face. And we're going to take a little look. So it is, there's a video right here. Bolton, Bolton, UK, September 20, uh, September 4th, 2023. Let's get it. So we've got this strange white anomaly up in the sky here so obviously we've got a bit of perspective because this looks like a telephone line so you can see from the telephone line up to here could be a washing line for all i know but you know something liney and we've got this it looks i can't tell if it's the shutter rate oh now i zoomed in still image oh oh Right, that answers my question. Basically, I was going to say, I can't tell that when you look at it from here, it looks like it's flashing. And you're like, well, is that flashing or is that the shutter rate from the camera? But when you look at the still images further on, you can see it's lighter, duller, duller. So it's clearly pulsing this kind of strange light. And it looks dead still. So for me, that discounts satellites, you know, orbiting things off planet, the ISS, for example. And it kind of leads it to more, could it be a star? Maybe, but I've never seen a star kind of pulse light like that. Um, you know, it can't be a plane because it's motionless. It's, it's very still. So what could it be? I mean, like I say, it could, it could, it could be, uh, I can't find a logical explanation, which, you know, I don't like to go straight to the UFO kind of thing. Like it's a UFO because I like to look at logical for look look at logical things first but when you can't point out the logic like you can with this one where it's the pulsating this light it's dead still it's not it, it, well it's not moving from what I can tell it's not moving it doesn't look like it's moving at all is it no it didn't look like it was moving um and then you got the the context of the still images here I can't think of what, anything other than a potential UFO does that mean it's a UFO? No, because I'm not, who is qualified to uh, diagnose a UFO? But when logic is thrown out the window and you've got nothing left, got nothing left, it, it begs the question of what truly is it? So again, please let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Anyway, this one came from um, a lass called Natalie. Now, Natalie sent me this over Facebook and Instagram. And she said, hey Ben, I've got a video I took on Sunday night of a possible UFO. What's the way, best way to send it to you, please? I would love to get your thoughts on it as I'm baffled. And then there's a bit more context just before we get into the video that says, it was taken around 7.30 p.m. on Sunday in North Yorkshire, Harrogate. Sorry, it's a bit wobbly. It was, I was walking my dog and it pulled uh, in every direction. Don't worry, I've got a toddler who does the exact same thing. So let's get into this clip. Please tell me I can full screen it. Actually, ignore me one second. I'm going to go to Instagram because I can full screen it. And I'm just going to keep talking. So, um, lovely weather we're having. Here it is. Here it is. Right, let's get this video. And then we're going to full screen it because it's going to be better viewing for you guys. And we're locked in. Here we go. There it is again. So you see it kind of dips in behind the clouds and then just reappears. Again, dips in. I think that's behind the clouds. I so can't really tell from my awful lighting. Let me turn the brightness up. 
There it is. I think. No, it's not. That's a plane. Is it? Right, there you go. So you can see it's a hard one, this one. This one's real hard because it's obviously bright. I thought I initially I saw like lights and I was like, oh, is that just a plane? But no, I don't think it is because, you know, I trust that Natalie's switched on. You know, I think Natalie's got her head screwed on. She'd, she'd know the difference between a plane and a UFO. Um, so, you know, I'm going to rule out the, the, the possibility of a plane. But, it, you know, what could this be? Uh, when I watched it the first time, I thought, obviously plane, no. Could it be, like, Starlink? space station it's too bright for that like it's a it's a bright light in the sky don't get me wrong when you see starlink but it's um it's very very dull this is this is enormously bright like this is letting off some light um so you know and then when the way that it kind of fades in and out like that like it doesn't look like it goes behind the clouds but i can't really tell from this kind of brightness but i've got a feeling that this could be um, this could really be something strange up in the sky. Just because of the enormous amount of light that's been emitted from it. So, you know, my, again, like I say, my initial thought process was went to, um, to Starlink and a plane. I ruled out a plane, I ruled out Starlink, so that leaves me with... What does that leave me with? A UFO. I don't know where, where my head went there, but... Yeah, a UFO is exactly where it leaves me. Now, yeah, interesting one nonetheless, but uh, I definitely think that something strange has been captured up in the up in the skies of uh, the of Yorkshire there because I can't explain it. But maybe you guys can get down in the comments, help Natalie discover what this could have possibly been. Um, you guys are far better at it than I am. Now, the next clip that we're going to take a look at, this one really piqued my interest. It only came into me last night at the time of recording. So it's from a guy called Victor, and it just captioned UFO talk. He went on to state, Hello Laney and Ben, I watched your video today and I felt like you need to hear the truth straight from the horse's mouth about flying saucers. You know what that means. I've left comments on your YouTube videos. This time I hoped to reach out and uh, be a little bit more directly. I absolutely agree. I get so many comments. I do try and read through all of them and acknowledge as many as I can. But it gets so hard because everyone's, you know, there's a lot of comments to sift through. So this is a definitely a far better way. If you're trying to reach me um, a bit more directly with a story or with um, videos, definitely email, Instagram, whatever. Anyway, moving on. I don't mind talking face to face over the cell phone and you're and on the video. Uh, yes, I've seen a flying saucers up close. I've always felt like I tried to talk to someone, but they would never believe me. It's up to you. Well, Victor, I'm... I always love to give people the benefit of the doubt on these things. I made a video years back talking about the flying saucers. I painted a picture of that day showing where it happened. I didn't get many views for whatever reason. YouTube's a finicky place. I was always a little bit shaken up, so I tried to relax as much as I could while making it for multiple reasons. That could be explained at another time. I held back on a few details because I felt like people would never believe me. I've put myself in other people's shoes to understand how they would feel about it. I think that's a very logical way to go about it. I was only uh, eight going on nine years old in 1965 when it happened. Eyes like that of a hawk and knew uh, what belongs in the skies. Fair enough. I said in my video that the flying saucers came down over a church and trees. That's not so. The first saucer was floating about 15 feet above a neighborhood road and it dropped from the sky. It made a right hand turn over another road, roughly 100 yards, and it pulled up to a highway 41. No traffic at all at the time back then. Well, it must have been a simpler time when there's no traffic. The saucer pulled up into the highway, dropping the front downward and then leveling off. I saw the top very well. It looked like coils of some type spaced th roughly three feet apart from the dome to outer edge of the saucers, maybe heating coils slash cooling coils. I can give so much more details, I'm just not typing it all out in text, it's quicker and easier for me to tell your face or better understanding. The saucer powered up and a strange bellow of air force field happened. 
It's slightly pitched the front upwards, very little. It was eye level watching it. All of a sudden, in a flash, it jumped roughly 125 yards to an almost stop, but still moving faster than the blink of your eye snapping your finger. The distance was closer than I could uh, put, put the picture. Google Earth measuring shows 200 yards eye level in front of me. So much more detail I could give, but not having to ex text to explain. Um, and then goes on to give me a few more details, but does give me the link to a video which he made um, around three years ago, got a thousand views, and it says flying saucers, UFOs, UAPs, and goes on to talk about his story. Now, I am going to link this video down in the description. So if you want the full video, I'm not going to take the entire video because I don't think that's fair, but um, if you want to watch the full video, please get down in the description. Go and help out Victor. Go and show him some love on this video. And, uh, you know, maybe you can offer in his comment section, not mine, um, some explanations as to what Victor is explaining. But we're going to take a little look at the first maybe five, ten minutes of this video. Yeah, let's go. Testing one, two, three. The audio doesn't seem to start. Video does. I want to make sure I'm being heard. And what this video is about is real flying saucers made by alien beings, extraterrestrial, whatever you want to call them. But they were certainly not human made. And I'm going to start by showing you a picture that I painted of that evening when it all happened. Now, I'm not a professional at this, but what matters is it happened. All right. Let me start by saying. My mother and I went over to my grandparents. No one was there. We were waiting on my grandfather to get home. And it was about 15 after 5, 5.30. The sun was getting low, but there was still plenty of light. All right. Something catches my eye. I thought it was two blackbirds coming down through the trees, but I realized that they were not coming down through the trees. There wasn't no branch, uh, no leaves on the trees. It was the beginning of spring. And I kept watching and I realized that they were not behind the trees and they came from the east and they made quick moves to where they were immediately up higher than what they were. And they began to look like, kind of like a tit tat, but not quite so big and rounded on each end. And I kept watching, realizing that there wasn't no wings or anything. Now, this took place only about four to five miles, say, from Lockheed Air Base to the south of me. I knew very well what airplanes, helicopters, and balloons, there was a lot of blimps flying around, so let's not get that mixed up with the facts. Now, before they, I thought they were going to just fly right on by, and it looked like they just kind of stopped on a dime and then dropped. Well, they dropped back down kind of in the angle that they came from. And I lost sight of them. And it only took a second or two. And all of a sudden, one swoops down. It's on the other side of the highway, roughly 500 yards away. And... It appeared all of a sudden right over a church and some trees and it slowed down very quickly and I got to see the top of it and the shape. It was a flying saucer and uh, it looked like it had kind of like on a record or something but you know I'm not describing how the surface felt or anything 
but it had these circle lights on it, lines of look on it and the dome did not stick up high at all and it was very unique how it was just so perfect in the shape of its dome and the dome seemed to be stretched out you know somewhat over the top of it and then the most amazing thing happened when it went to cross over Highway 41, whether if there was any cars coming or not, looking straight that way where it, where they crossed, it kicked it. And when it kicked it, it was so fast that if you had your fingers ready to snap and you snapped your fingers, it jumped roughly 125 yards as fast as you could snap your fingers and then of course the other one was coming down it, behind it several hundred yards but that first one I really kept my eye on it because they were both the same and I, I didn't want to lose sight of them you know, I, I wasn't worried about nothing. I didn't know what they were. I was just so used to, you know, various airplanes and things flying around. I thought, okay, this is just something else. But things didn't add up. After it shot across the highway so quickly, they came down black. They turned gray as I saw them. And... When they crossed over the highway, part of the back of it was still black, just a little bit of it, and the rest was gray. But then the front of them immediately began to go into disappearing mode, cloak mode, like they were going behind a curtain. But I could still see what looked like a framing structure. And uh, I can't say that it was a framing structure. It just looked like the framing structure. I've heard about lights that can appear very big from small technology wiring or whatever. I'm just trying so hard to figure things out on my own. Now, I'm going to stop it there because obviously, like I said, that's just a portion of the story. Uh, so please go over to Victor's channel, uh, leave the link down below, uh, because this is such an intriguing story that I feel like he needs closure. He needs help to understand what we saw. And also, I want you guys to hear what he saw because I've watched the entire video. I enjoyed every second of it. The way that he articulates and, um, you know, uh, describes the story in a narrative way is very, you know, you can you can visualize it and it, it was amazing so it gave me an idea as well to like maybe on a, like a mini series on this channel we can have people who have experienced ufos but not caught it on camera um you know maybe come onto the channel and talk about their experiences um uh, you know maybe give give people a platform to kind of explain what they saw and maybe even if they don't think it was necessarily a ufo open the floor for people like you guys to take a look at list take a little listen take a look um you know watch the video and say this is what my thought is on what you witnessed or what you experienced um i'd absolutely love that i think that would be a pretty cool idea so if that's something that you want to do or if you've got ufo stories let me know down in the comments and uh, if you've got any footage that you want me to send send to me sorry not to necessarily review because i feel like a review would be to like pick it apart but you know to just share with other people that if you're not sure about what it was or you're 100 certain it was a ufo send it over send it via email laney and ben at gmail.com you can send it over instagram facebook twitter they're all just laney and ben and um, we've got a discord channel that you can send stuff over uh links to those all of those will be down in the description. But uh, yeah, please send it over because I love making videos like this because like I say, it's not Hollywooded up when people send me their raw footage from their cameras. It's just, it's just what they experienced. And that's the beauty of it. You know, it's just what someone who was out on a dog walk, for example, like Natalie or someone who was out in, um, you know, out in their back garden just witnessed. And it, uh, it, it, it it's amazing. So way down there doing all that stuff. I know I waffled on for long enough. Be sure to jump to get the hell out of that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe if you're new and tickle my little bell so you get notified whenever we upload. And until next time, I hope that you guys have enjoyed. Cannot wait to see you in the next one. And I'll speak to you later. Peace.